That's your favorite thing. Welcome, everybody, to Talking Baseball with Sal Angeletti, live, of course, from Hamilton Radio and Iron Horse Film Studio, right here in Hamilton, New Jersey. And we got a really big shoe tonight. And, of course, sitting to my right is my co-host. Clara McGlaskey. And my Miracle League family. Hey, it's the commission, Dan Schweck. And it's the voice, Andy Santoro. Hey, guys, we got a big show tonight. Uh, we got two calling guests, and uh, Danielle... How do you say how the last name? Carth McCartney. 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 Oh, like McCarty, but McCarty. McCarty. And uh, Stephanie Davis. Yes, Stephanie Davis from the Miracle League National Offices. Do it right down in Georgia. Real quick, Jordan. Sal. While I do, uh, shout give, out. Give ahead. a couple of shout outs to our boy Matt with uh, Rutgers, who beat Maryland a couple days ago at the rack. So. I bet he was happy uh, with that uh, big upset at school. Hope you were here. And also with uh, Danny, which you were here also. Uh, we're wishing all the best for both of you, and we'll see you real soon. All right, Sal, back all to right, you. Uh, a lot of things, uh, Aaron Judge, a little scary going on there. What is going on with Judgey? Went, went from shoulder to peck. Uh, they're running uh, what Brian Cashman calls the car wash of tests. Uh, I don't know if he got the Tuesday special, but uh, – it's a buy one, get one free, but who knows with the car watch. But uh, they're a little worried, you know, what they, they say to guys with, you know, a lot of muscular prone to get injured, I guess. I suppose so. Then, of course, Maybe that's why I'm not injured. There's John <laughs> Carlo, Jean Carlo, John Carlo, Mike Stan, whatever you want to call him. John Carlo, because he got, I heard he'll get pissed off at you. Mike Stanton? Mike, <laughs> why did he even change his name? I don't know. I don't know. Why, why was, was he called Mike Everybody? for the first like five years of his career, and then all Everybody of a sudden he was Giancarlo? Stands out more. You want Giancarlo? Giancarlo. Mossy Brombalo. I think that's our phone call. We got a phone call. Hello. Hello. Yes, hello. Hey, it's Danielle McCartan. Hey. hey, Danielle. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Danielle from. Can I say it? What happened? Can I say you're from? <laughs> Where you are, or would we get in trouble? Oh, no, you can say it for oh, sure. Daniel McCartan from WFAN, ladies there and gentlemen. Hey. How are you? Thank you for calling. Yeah, anytime. It, this is great. I'm good. This is great. <laughs> so uh, we probably got a lot of questions for you. We're going to start with uh, how did you get started in the biz? <laughs> uh, it's a very long story. It would probably take up most of your show. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Really, I mean, I, I put a podcast out about it, but uh, I guess the beginnings of it. I mean, I never went to school for for sports broadcasting by any means. I'm, I'm a teacher, still am a teacher by day, and uh, I don't know. It just kind of evolved, and I always had a I don't know. I had an inkling, and I just kind of just went for it because I never wanted to think, you know, what if, what if I didn't try it? So I tried it, and uh, seems to be working out just fine. <laughs> It, it's it's great. It's and we're very, it's just, uh, just, I used to think it was just, I used to think it was like just show up and then, you know, walk into the studio and get on camera. It, it wasn't. It's not like that. But it took about four years of hard work. Still, am working hard, and I got a, a weekly show on the fan. That's great. It's it's awesome. That's my favorite radio station. I've been listening to it since I was in the morning, and you know, evolved. I've been listening from. 6 a.m., you know, with everybody, and I get all my ideas from the show. 
and, and it's a great yeah. station to listen to. Uh, have you ever listened to my show? I'm, I'm usually just, yeah, <laughs> well, he's, he's in bad. bad. He's in bad. Sorry, he's in bad. <laughs> no, when I when I was still working with the New York Sanitation Department, I retired three years ago. So whenever I was on the road, the station was on. So I might have. I think I might have caught you. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> Any, uh, guys, anybody on the panel uh, want to ask her a question? Danielle, do you sleep at all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> not really. I, especially on the weekends, I uh, I kind of get what I can take on the weekends. It's like maybe if I could sleep before the show, which is usually not, and then about four hours after it. <laughs> so not really. <laughs> so how long have you been on the, on the fan now doing this show? Um, I mean, I was doing a lot of fill-in work for about a year. You know, if someone takes off on a holiday or something. I work Thanksgiving, things like that. And then probably about September, I got the weekly show. You know, starting in September, I got the, the Saturday night slot. And then um, every week in, until this week. I mean, in, until further notice, I assume. <laughs> That's awesome. Have you heard of the Miracle League? Mm, I got something in my email, I think, about it. <laughs> I think. I get a lot of messages a day. It's hard, it's hard for me to keep them straight sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's my shameless plug. So the Miracle League is a, <laughs> it's a nonprofit that we run down here in Mercer County, New Jersey. Uh, and it serves uh, individuals with special needs. It's a baseball league. And we're actually okay. we're into our 15th year. We're celebrating our 15th anniversary this year. There's over 300 Miracle Leagues all across the United States, Canada, uh, Australia, uh, and one that just opened up in Cancun last year, Cancun, Mexico. So it's it's pretty cool. It's it's a it's kind of a fun thing. Uh, we uh, about I want to say six months ago met Sal. Sal actually came out to our Miracle League and uh, uh, you know introduced himself and got a chance to see our kids playing on our our fully uh, accessible, inclusive ball field. And we kind of started this partnership where now we're doing this show where. Uh, Sal's been kind enough to invite us on, and we bring our our players on as as guests, and and parents get to come on and kind of tell their stories about what it means to them to have their kid play <laughs> baseball when otherwise they might not have that opportunity. So that's kind of where we are and what we do here. So I wanted to kind of give you that little information uh, as we're sitting here chatting. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. That's uh, that's that's just good selfless work. And you know, I, as a teacher, I myself and as a coach myself, um. You know, yeah, I really appreciate that. I mean, that's that's giving these kids something that they really never had. These parents, something that they really never had. You know, sometimes we take that for granted. You know, or you and I and, and all of us that we could just go out to a to a field and, and pick up a bat and, and and play baseball. But these kids can't. And and think about. I mean, I'm not a parent, but I would assume that you know every parent wants to cheer their kid on at a game or something. And yeah. you know, it's just really good. It's really good selfless work that you guys are doing. And and. and Mad props to you. I hate saying that, but mad props. <laughs> no, thank yeah. you so much. That's very nice of you to say. And, yeah, we really do love what we're doing. And, um, you know, hey, if you're ever around and you're not, you're not like, sleeping off your, your, <laughs> your, your midnight show, I mean, you're more than welcome to come down and check it out. We start out uh, April 4th as our opening day. So. All right. Well, if, do you guys start, go through the summer? Because that, that would probably be, you know. Oh, we go all year round now. We, we have a schedule. We're going all year round, day. so you, we can send you the schedule, and you can uh, you can pick a date and come down and check us out. All right, yeah, send me the schedule for sure. I'll, I'll pick a date in the summertime now. But you guys, have, I'm, I'm told I'm school lets out. It's, it's really <laughs> regimented. My schedule is very regimented. <laughs> yeah, again, I think it comes back to the the original question: Do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not a lot. It's still the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, did you pick the time slot, or you were just like, "Hey, eh, I'll take what I can get"? How did it happen? Yeah, no, it's, 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 I wish I could pick a time slot. I love, like, a you know, a daytime slot. That would be nice. But, unfortunately, that's not exactly how you start out. It's kind of like, um, you know, first of all, I have to say, I am on the original sports. I, have, I'm, I host a four-hour show each week on the original sports station in the country. That's first. So when they say to you, hey, uh, are you free at 3 a.m. on uh, July 27th, uh, you're like, yeah, yeah, I am free that day. And then you make yourself free. So, um, no, I would take the time slot, but, you know, I, my, the audience has grown. I mean, I look over at, you know, it's just something. When you look over at the call trainer, it's literally full at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean, that that is, like, it's just an awesome feeling. You know, I, I, I can't explain it, but long story short, no. They said this is your time slot, and, you know, 
you know, do the best you can with it. And I, I think I am, judging by the calls for years. Hey, there we go. It works go. out. She, she's the new sh schmooza. <laughs> 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 Hello, Danielle. This is Carl, the other uh, co-host. How are you doing? Hi, Carl. I'm good, Carl. How are you? Good. My question is for you. What, who inspired you to lead you down to this path to be on the radio as we are back here in Mercer County? But who influenced you to go on the radio out in New York on the fan? Um, I it cut out. It cut out a little bit. What encouraged me to go? Yes, who went for the, basically who who, went, who, 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 who influenced, influenced you? you? Who was your mentor that said, "Hey, they do it. I want to do it. Be just like them." Who influenced you? Was it family, friends, whatever? Just tell us who did that for you. Oh, uh, you know, it, this the fans kind of started like this. My dad was listening to. I was at school already. My dad was listening to uh, you know Boomer and Geo in the morning, and he said, "Hey, my dad texted me. He's like, hey." They have an opening for a beat, uh, beat reporter, Jet beat reporter. I'm a fan. Oh. I was like, really? So Twitter has worked its magic for me. I sent a couple messages, a couple DMs, and found myself in Mark Chernoff's office. And he was like, Liz, I explained my situation to him. And he has been absolutely the best, most accommodating guy, you know, it, that could be. But he said, listen, uh, don't quit your teaching job to make $100 a day to drive down to uh, Forum Park to cover the Jets for a day and drive all the way back. It's, it's, it's not worth it. So I promise you I'll give you a time slot. And I was like, okay, you know, you know, you don't know. I don't know this guy at, at that point. And sure enough, he called. And he said, that's when he said, are you free on whatever, 3 o'clock a.m.? I, I took the last hour of Tony Page's show one night and um, just did like a, an audition sort of thing. And uh and then I guess I did okay. <laughs> you, you're doing, you're doing yeah. great. You're doing a great job. And I know JJ yeah. is J, JJ is from my old area of Staten Island, and I saw his story. And uh, is is Susan Waldman a big influence to you? Um, you know, I, I've never met Susan Waldman, and you know, one night I had her on just as like, you know, in the beginning, especially, I, you know, it's hard to fill a time slot at that time. You know, if no one's yeah. calling, it's just yeah. you live and die by the callers overnight like that. So in the beginning, as I was growing my audience. I kind of leaned on guests, you know, to have a guest on for a segment each night. And I still do, you know, when, when appropriate. But um, one of the guests I had, was talking about the Yankees, I, I decided to reach out to Susan Waltman. And I never met her. Um, and I actually don't even really listen to the sports radio, honestly. I really don't even listen to the Yankees games on the radio. I actually prefer, I'm a visual learner. I prefer to watch them on TV. But um, I reached out, and she was a totally, absolutely accommodating to me. And she was like, sure, let's do it. So we started texting, and then um, she uh, she came on my show, and people the feedback that people were giving me like, "Have you are you guys friends?" Did you, you know, like, no, <laughs> it's, a, it's a chemistry, I guess. <laughs> in the interview, I, I never actually met her in person ever yet. Uh, I have plans to this summer at the at the Yankee Stadium, but um, no, uh, I never met her, and she gave an excellent interview, and then so much so that when I released my podcast, this, <laughs> this is my shameless plug through Entercom. And through radio.com and WFAN, if you go into podcast, it's there. It's called Power Players. Um, yes, it kind yes. of focuses on women in sports. And as I talked to you guys, I'm watching the U.S. women's national team. The second half just started. But, um, I, I, you know, I said to myself, I said, you know what? I got such great feedback from Susan. She was great that night. She's a pioneer in, you know, radio. Yes. So I'm going to have her on as my first guest. And so I did. And Kind of anytime I, she said, anytime I need her to do anything, just let her know. And I think that's an awesome connection to have. So are you a big Yankee fan? Um, you know what? I, to be very honest, I, I honestly, I root for all the New York teams. I mean, it makes that's my job a lot easier when they're all good, let's be honest. <laughs> all um, right. let, and let the Mets and Yankees are in different divisions, you know, so I, I, I believe that it is intended not to root against each other, honestly, but... If you had, to, if, if it was, people always say this. Okay, if it's the Yankees and Mets World Series, who are you picking? I'm picking the Yankees. I started oh, on people. There you go. Yankees. Come on, it's all right, Al. Seven, so. well, you're, you're, you're looking at two Yankee fans, a Philly fan, and a Met fan in the oh, corner. Let's so, go. Yeah, yeah. Poor, poor right, Andy you know. didn't like the response to that yeah. one. The, Harper, the poor Met Bryce fan Harper, over there. Bryce Mets. Harper. Oh, here we go. Bryce Harper, what has he done for you lately? Oh, there it is. Oh. He, hit two, he hit two home runs yesterday. That's spring in training. spring training. Spring You're training. talking about spring training? So, we're oh, in spring man. Training, aren't we? We're in spring training. Uh, spoken like a true Philadelphia yeah, yeah, fan yeah, over where, here. Where are you from? Where am I? Uh, Burton County, New Jersey, North Jersey. There we go. Oh, you are from Jersey. Yeah, it's funny how you know Kono and I know Kono. 
And I, I know him since like the 90s. Hang, hang yeah, out. Kono, well, Kono does uh, some work with our Italian American Baseball Foundation, so he, he does some photography work there. So yeah, that's he, how I met him. Nice yeah, time. yeah, very small world. That, and being we lived all in Brooklyn together, and it was it was fun. So what what are your predictions this year? <laughs> um, you mean for for the Yankees and for the Mets, both of them? Yeah. Um, I say Yankees. It's, it's got to be World Series or bust for the Yankees. It's been that way from for like three years now, and now the Astros aren't cheating, or presumably <laughs> they're cheating. Uh, you have to think that they're going to get there, you know, because it, you know to beat the Yankees, you have to be a cheater. So that, that's what I take from that. Um, so hopefully it'll be World Series or bust for the Yankees, and then um, for the Mets, you know, NL East is, is I think is the toughest division in all of baseball. So. Um, you got the Braves. You got obviously the, the World Series defending uh, Nationals. Uh, for the Mets, I say a wild card spot for the Mets. I'll take it. I'll take it. We predicted that. Happens after that. Yeah, yeah roll the dice. You hope you know. Hopefully they make it far. But um, I just I, I, the, the bullpen for the Mets is the big question mark for me, and, and we'll see. If the bullpen's great, you know, maybe NLCS for the Mets. Who knows? I was I was thinking that. They should do like a reverse role for the Mets. Have Diaz go in the eighth and have Dylan come in the ninth, like he was on the Yankees. Maybe, maybe to just ease ease him up a little bit, give it build his confidence. Yeah, I think. Yeah, right. And and I think sometimes the pressure. Oh, goal! Who just scored? Christian Press just scored from fifty three feet. Um, there you go. Live updates. Live. Look at that. Look at that. She does it all. Yeah, Talks on the radio. <laughs> Score updates. All, all around the fender. Boom. Out ahead. Top left corner. Top right corner. Good. There you go. Cool. Play by play. Um, okay. Sorry. So. Um, <laughs> it's great. It's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, 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 Edwin Diaz. Yeah, I think. I think you know everything I've read about him, and I've never interviewed him myself, but everything I've read about him kind of says points in the direction that that. He was under a lot of pressure last year. His mom had cancer um, last year. She's cancer-free now. But, I mean, that's just it's just a lot to take in. Pitching in New York in a closer role for the Mets, yeah. I, I don't think that's a bad suggestion. Let him pitch the eighth and let Dylan Patances close the ninth. He's used to New York. We'll, we'll say that much, right? Yeah. I've done it well, idea. yeah. I have a question yeah. for you, Danielle. Uh, with your uh, time slot in the uh, middle of the mornings, do you, have, do you get any phone calls about the Knicks? Or the Nets, or it's just basically football and baseball. Um, I, I guess now that since I've kind of developed, uh, you know, a little bit of a following at least, you know, I, I, my main sports are baseball, football. I'll talk, you know, I'll talk about basketball if people want to call about it. I'll talk about hockey if people want to call about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do. I get probably about three Knicks calls a night. Really, no Nets calls. Like really, none at all. Um, and I would say, I would say. Baseball calls, followed by football calls, about three Knicks ones a night, and probably about three or four Rangers ones a night. Right, because kind uh, of how correct because uh, the station that I listen to, because uh, I'm in uh, Central Jersey, I listen to a Philadelphia channel, sports channel, and all they talk about is basically the Eagles and the Sixers. If the Phillies and Flyers are doing good, they'll talk about it. But it's only those yeah. top two. Daniel, yeah, what do you I think? Mean, it, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You cut out a little bit. I thought you finished. I was uh, no, it's it's Dan again. I was going to ask you about. You were talking about the three questions you got a night on the on the Knicks. What do you think of the whole yeah. Spike Lee thing? Oh man, you know I didn't get a chance to really. But I mean, I don't know what to believe because you see a picture of him and, and James Dolan shaking hands. That's one. First yeah. of all, when was that picture taken? What was that that night? I mean, you know what I mean. So you don't know really what to believe. It's a he said, she said. I think it's just. It's just a bad look all around for the Knicks. I mean, come on. First Charles Oakley, now Spike Lee. And Spike Lee is the freaking face of the franchise. I mean, really, who else? I mean, for a casual fan who are just, you know, maybe tuning into the Knicks, who do they think about? Oh, Spike Lee, he's a big Knicks fan. They don't know any of the players on the team. I mean, who does? Not for nothing. Spike Lee's not a bad guy. I used to work security at MSG. And my spot was right behind where all the stars sit. And I'll, I'll do a cheap list plug. I was in three seconds of the movie. The other guys were Will Farrell, the part where they're at MSG and they stand up, and I'm like sitting right there. And I saw Spike every every Nick game I worked. He, nothing bad. He's a diehard fan. He was there yeah. front row seat. Even if they've been lo- they've been losing, he's been yeah, there every home game. I don't yep. see anything wrong. 
That's the yep. problem with and the social I, media. And that's a shame. The guy was with them through thick and thin, and now all of a sudden he's a problem. I mean, come on. They just can't get out of their own and way. Like, I mean, I'm a Knicks fan, but I haven't watched the real Knicks game in like 10 years. Is that just a yeah, cheap plug, you think, just to get media attention? Uh, that's I not mean, good attention. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I subscribe to the thought that, like, you know, I, I don't really don't like that line of any attention is bad attention, or any attention is good attention, you know? There is such thing as bad attention, and for me, I don't like that. For me, maybe for the Knicks it's different. I don't really know, but... Why would they be trying to drum up that sort of bad interest and bad karma? Because let's be honest, they're trying to attract free agents. They thought they were going to get one last summer, or one or two of them last summer. They end up getting zero, not even a meeting with either of them. So why would they want to right. put that out there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like yeah. they're always saying that no one, no one wants to go uh, to the Knicks. That they chose Brooklyn over the Knicks. Yeah. The Knicks yeah. are the Knicks right. are coronavirus right now. Everybody's trying to avoid them. <laughs> That's so big. <laughs> All right, how about the Yankees, Daniel? What do you think about the Yankees this year? Uh, let's let's go here. Let's let's set an over under for wins. Let's go. Uh, let's say ninety eight point five over under. Take the over under there. Over taking the over on that because you got to look at their division. The Red Sox are going to suck. The Orioles are going to suck. The Rays might give them a run for it, but you know how many times they're playing the, the you can just look at how many times they play in their own division this season. You know, oh, don't get I me think s- it's going to be it's definitely over hundred. Don't get me 100. started with I mean, that. I, I I hate the schedule. I complained last year. You played the Orioles 13 times in a month and a half. Glaber Torres might have 40 home runs this year, and half of them might be against the <laughs> against Orioles. Yeah. Well, he did last year, right? That's pretty much what he did, yeah. He might have the on the road. He had, he had what? He had 35 last year, 36? 30, like 35 that. home runs? I'm not, I'm not looking at it. Yeah, but I, I mean, he had at least – he had more than a dozen. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And the Red Sox still haven't gotten their punishment yet. Yeah, I know. That, that's the other thing. Like, when that's is that going to come out? I mean, are, what are we waiting for? Christmas or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, speaking of them, they're hurting. Uh, sales uh, shoulders not doing too good either. Sales? I know. I saw that. You know what? It, it, it's like the Yankees. It's just, if he needs the surgery, like, what's another week going to make? Just, just send him for the surgery already. Let's, let's get it over with. Right. Do you see any big trades occurring or I would say either before the season or right near the All Star break. For the Yankees pitching wise, uh, I don't. I, I don't. First of all, I don't know how they operate. But if I were them, I would kind of stay stand pat for the All Star break because you have James Paxton returning, you have Domingo Herman returning. So that's like you know two new guys bolstered into the lineup early. So it's like. I wouldn't panic. I wouldn't hit the panic button. I mean, when you look at the strength of schedule, I looked at it last week. It, it's not too hard for the Yankees for the first two months of the season. So right. don't panic. Don't trade any pieces away because everybody knows, you know, you're rich in pieces and they're going to try and rob you. So if you're the Yankees, stand pat, wait till they come back end of May, beginning of June, and, uh, and, then, and then see. If you have to reassess by the trade deadline, of course, by all means, do that. But don't panic now by any means. Yeah, I heard today that uh, Montgomery got the number four starting position. Well, you, we, we knew that was yeah. coming. Well, there's, what they're yeah. saying that's interesting is that, you know, you got pitchers one through 15, right, on a 40-man roster. You yeah. say that those, those top 15 pitchers and, you know, the first 11 are going to be on the act, are, are going to be on the, on the yeah, big league the roster team, yeah. with the rest of the guys kind of shuffling back and forth. But I they said pitchers 15 through 30 are, ju- are, are right there, ready to go. Yeah, and I think that we see that with the Yankees. When you look at kind of their depth of Davey Garcia and guys like that, yeah. they're all kind of sort of in that same, you know, grouping. So one of them is going to have to step up for that fifth spot, and we'll see. We'll see who it is. I mean, I, I, to me, I think it's going to be Will Isaac, but who knows? I, I agree. Yeah, but it's it's fun just seeing those young kids get up there and play, and this is their opportunity to do it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is, first of all, I like spring training. I know people think it's boring and it sucks, but – I kind of like it from a coach's perspective because you get to see, like, okay, who's done what to, to tweak their, you know, their deliveries or their batting stances. And, you know, who's, who's going to step up, those, those fringe guys? Who's going to be the guy? Who's going to be the surprise story to step up? You know, that's why I like it. I know it's not, it's not going to affect the Yankees, but I know who may get traded uh, by the deadline if they're uh, out of the race. He's unhappy with his contract, so he's only signed for this year. If the Cubs fall out and they're not in contention, I think – they would try if they don't re up them. I think they might be in a look to uh, trade Chris Bryant. 
Yeah, that's the thing we heard before the season started, too. I mean, I don't know if there's any room for the for the Chris Bryant on the Yankees, you know. Um, but I have to think that maybe the Mets might be looking at him. Um, but he's, he'd be a rental player, like you said. So you, know, you just got to be careful. You just got to be careful of, uh, you know, wh- wh- what you're giving up to get a rental player. I always say that, no matter who it is. Oh, yeah. But if, I, if, if he goes with the Mets, I would – Basically, here, whatever you want, here you go. Yeah, take it. I'll take him. Base, here you go. But no, Brody, we won't get him. It's fine. We'll get somebody else. We'll get a third <laughs> center fielder. That's what we need right now. If A-Rod buys the team, we'll be, they'll be all right. Spoken like a true Mets fan. Look, a true Mets fan. Look, look how much positivity we, is just We stack up in one Andy position right for no reason. That's just I what we do. I can't talk because we're going to finish in third place. <laughs> yeah. So I can't talk. It's going to be horrible. He's upset his Phillies. <laughs> Phillies yeah, made no he's transactions. Up, yeah, he's upset that the Phillies didn't get any starting pitching. Well, first of all, Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, you got Joe Girardi, who the Mets really struck out on. I know. I oh, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. I think about the about Phillies it. are going to be the sleeper team this year, really. They're going to be all right. Look at that. See? I don't you got, I'm, I've got confidence in you. I, I just don't say. I just don't <laughs> say. Uh, Joe Girardi was the, was the best available, and the Mets really missed on him. Thank you, Danielle. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm only relying, I'm relying on Aaron Ola and – a healthy Zach Wheeler, three, three, four, five. Arietta, who knows? Eflin, who knows? And the five is Pavetta. Uh, who knows with that also? So it's only the top two guys I could trust. Yeah, but you also have an excellent coach and an excellent hitter in D.D. Gregoria. So you, you don't know. You really don't know. Sir D.D. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't think they're allowed to say that out there. <laughs> Can't steal any. Danielle, when's your when's your next show? Our uh, next show is this Saturday night, and because it's a little weird because of the timing of the you know, daylight savings time, but so oh. I'm going to be on because in theory it, it two o'clock hour is when I normally start, but two o'clock gets skipped this time around, you know, because of daylight right. savings. So this weekend I'm going to be on from three a.m. on Sunday to six a.m. on Sunday. Maybe I'll tune in. I'm going to tune in. Yeah, I'll I'm tuning in. I'm going to have my coffee ready. I'm going to tune in. Maybe I'll call <laughs> well, in, too. We're going to all call in. Now, with, with your uh, Sunday morning show. Oh, wait. No, never. That makes no sense because it's Saturday morning and Sunday. Never mind. I was going to say. We're all going uh, to go up to FAN and does, hang does out. Does that affect your, uh, your teaching job during the week on Monday? But if you're only doing Saturday night into Sunday, then you're good. We're, go, we're going to wait for Al yeah, Dukes yeah. and maybe Skazarin to come in. Yeah, you know what? I, I've. I've opened up for that well not really opened up i've opened up for the warm-up show once but it's, it's hard because there's two studios and you don't really see each other because you're both like working and then all of a sudden you're it's like a switcheroo sort of thing so yeah you know you, you don't really see each other it's, when i go in there at, at that time of night i mean literally it's like i don't know you see about four people <laughs> <laughs> oh, i kind of like it though who, who does the 2020 update when you're up there uh marco belletti yeah, yeah, Marco usually, if there's somebody out in the morning, he's on uh, with Boomer and Geo too. Yeah, I heard him this week. He was on Monday and Tuesday, I think, of this week. I was like, wait a second, I know that voice. <laughs> <laughs> that That has got to be the funniest show. I cry when Geo does his impersonations. He's good. Francesa. Uh, the impersonations are awesome. I love them. He was on this morning doing it, and I was crying. I was like, oh, my God. They're great. <laughs> what? He did. Well, he does Brody Van Wagen and it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Even Andy loves that. I, I was listening. <laughs> who was it? I can't remember. I used to see Eddie, Eddie and them when, when Carlton was still with them. They used to do the pig roast at MetLife when I was working yeah. security there. I used to come through the gate. And I ran into Jerry Recco last year working at PNC Art Center at one of the concerts. I was like, hey, Jerry. <laughs> I saw oh did a cheap, yeah, yeah, I did a cheap plug of the show, so I was like, hey, Jerry, there you go. the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I want to thank you for calling, Danielle. Oh, of course. Anytime. And you you could call in. You could even come join us if you like. Well, where are you guys again? We are in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Mercer County. Robbins. All right, let's see. Robbinsville. New Jersey. I'm on, I'm on maps here. Hold on. <laughs> Exit 7A <laughs> off the uh, the New Jersey Turnpike. Well, 195. Correct. Right. Whatever. Opening saying. maps. Hold on. Yeah, we're. It's an right. hour and 28 minutes one way. Oof. Uh, <laughs> Maybe <no>. not. <laughs> you going? <laughs> we have Wawa though. It's a little far. 
Hey, whatever you whatever you're comfortable with is fine with me. The door is always open. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. And we appreciate you calling in. Thank you for yeah, calling in. Yeah, this was great. Thank yes, you so thank much you. for coming on. Danielle. We're tuning and in next Sunday. In, I'll be there. going to come get you. <laughs> All right. I, I'll be looking to see your names on the call screen. You guys. That's right. I'm calling. Yeah, we'll I'm be. Calling. I'm calling we're in on Sunday. In. We're going we're gonna to bombard you with net calls instead. <laughs> oh, no. I might, no I might need two cups of coffee. No one cares. <laughs> and I don't get started. Evan, Evan might be going crazy in the studio with him and Joe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. N- not until next year. No one cares about the Nets until next year. <laughs> until they're all healthy. If that if that happens. If that happens, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Danielle. Thank you so Thanks much. So much. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, guys. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye. That, that was great. That, that was, was fun. fun. That was fun. She's awesome. I'm going to call it. Yeah. All right. Call number two. Another call. Just like that. Another call. There you go. Okay, oh. Cole, you're on the air. Hey, Stephanie. Hello? Stephanie. Hey. hey, how are you guys? Hey, Lucky. we have Hello, Stephanie. How are you? We have Stephanie Davis from the, the Miracle League only. National Office is down yeah. in Cottage, Georgia, joining us. Thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, thank you guys for having me. <laughs> How's everything going down there? Oh, it's going good. It's been really busy, um, nonstop, but everything's good. So I know you, I, and you say you're busy. I, you, there might not be another person on the planet more busy than you. Um, you know, we, we do our, we do our weekly show and I always mention how there's over 300 Miracle Leagues now all across the country in Canada and, and, and Cancun now. Cancun. Um, yeah. But the Mexico, fun thing. That's exciting. And I'm, I'm waiting for you to get a schedule to have the, uh, the national all-star game down there so we can all go down to Cancun, but. Me too. We, we really thought about it. We had even thought about, you know, if we have a few in Canada as well, just the thought of all these families having to do passports would be pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. But I, the one thing that's really cool is this: the statistic that you shared with me a while back is that there are at least, what, 15 Miracle Leagues popping up each year? Yeah, we um, we're averaging about three new members a month, and oh, wow. um, depending on how long it takes them to fundraise, we're building between fifteen and twenty fields a year. Wow, that's unbelievable! And and there is the one uh, we may be bringing to you to Staten Island that that I that yeah. I was talking to you about. I'm really excited about that. So hopefully that that's, that's great. coming down the road. But uh, nice. um. Thank you for being on tonight. I was I was hoping that you could, if you don't mind, kind of share a little bit of a little bit of history for our viewers and everybody who's watching of how Miracle League came together. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so it goes all the way back about twenty years. Um, back in nineteen ninety nine, it's kind of the inception of the, the idea of the Miracle League by a local family in East Atlanta, Conyers, Georgia. Um, it was the Alford family uh, who came up with this idea just by being involved in the local youth baseball program. Um, and one of the T-ball teams had a brother with the kid in a wheelchair, and he was always at every practice and every game just watching from the sidelines. And one day um, the coach decided, hey, let's just invite him onto the field and let him play and let the kids interact with them. And they pushed him around and, um, he had the time of his life, and but obviously, you know, the obstacle was the venue, the field that he was getting, you know, stuck and turned over and, um, you know, getting stuck on the bases and um, just having a hard time maneuvering around the field. So that one game, just for those few minutes, um, a group of people came together and said, hey, what if we were to um, – you know, see if there was a need and get a, get a team together with some kids with special needs. And um, so they actually just put the word out, and a few weeks later they had um, 30 or 40 kids that showed up. And obviously, you know, the venue was going to be the obstacle. So um, the Alford family was involved with Rotary that year. And um, so Rotary decided, hey, let's make this our project for the year, and they ended up raising – close to a million dollars to build the first of its kind Miracle League complex, which was, um, you know, your rubberized field, your accessible bathrooms, 
Um, and what was really important to them is that they were in midst of this complex with all their siblings and friends. So that's where it all started back in 2000 um, is when that field opened up. And uh, really what happened is Rotary started doing some international media spots. Um, and HBO heard about it, Bryant Gumbel, the Braves were involved, so we had Brian Jordan and some of the, um, the Braves players and uh, Bobby Cox and some of the, you know, management, and um, it hit HBO Real Sports, and that's really when people started hearing about it, um, with Frank DeFord and Brian Gumbel told our story back in 2000 for the first time. Um, and that's actually how I got involved. Uh, I heard... A friend of mine, I was living in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, a friend of mine uh, saw the special on HBO and he called me and he said, hey, we need to do this in Myrtle Beach. Um, so we did some research and we found Diane, which is our director, um, Diane Offord, and we called her and we said, hey, how do we do this in Myrtle Beach? And she said, come down Saturday and see a game and let's talk about it. Um, and so from 2001 was basically um, – the you know beginning of the fundraising for field two in the country which was myrtle beach south carolina and from there we just started um diane and i just started working on documenting every step so that we could have something to pass on to the next community um because you know we were recreating the wheel you know we were like this has never been done before um so everything was trial and error and you know bringing some of these partners together and and what to do and what not to do, and to be able to hand that over to the next community that called um, was kind of our goal and really important to us to, to help save these communities the time and uh, resources, the, the money, and, you know, just, um, you know, what all it takes to, to try to make that easier for them was our goal at that point. So 20 years later, um, we're now at 320 uh, Miracle Leagues across the country and a few international as well. Um, we do have some interest, obviously. We, ha we actually have a second interest in Mexico right now. Wow. Um, and we've had some interest in Australia. And we get interest from all over the, the world. I mean, we've had calls from Iraq and Iran and um, Egypt. And, I mean, just you never know when that phone rings who it's going to be. Um, and the logistics sometimes can be, you know, a little bit hard with some of these countries, but it's growing and people are hearing about it, and um, we're really excited. We're, we're about to have a, a growth spurt in Canada um, with some partners that we're establishing there. So um, just been a great journey over the past 20 years and really blessed to be a part of it. It, it really is a remarkable thing to see just from our little corner of it all. But uh, and, it's, and it's a lot of credit to you and, the, and to Diane and all the people down there that that planted the seed and kind of let it grow. It's really, it's just so great. And now that we're having these national events and we're coming together each year and building our networks, I know I'm so very grateful for that because it's allowed us to kind of see what's going on all over the country. And like you said, and beyond, and it's kind of inspiring us each individually to do more. I know, um, you know, we were just in Pittsburgh uh, two weeks ago for, uh, for South Hills uh, annual fundraiser and, I know you know we've been oh, partnering God. up a lot with them. Yeah, so we were out there with Timmy Gebhardt and, and Sean Casey. And, you know, just to be able to yeah. be a part of that and see all the things they're doing and then to take those ideas and for them to so, you know, selflessly share them with us and then come back and we just bring right. these ideas back here and <clears throat> use them here to keep growing. It's just so cool. So cool. Well, and that is, you know, really important because it is just – it is, you know, very small – corporate office, Diane, myself, and we have a part-time person that helps us with administration. But without our local leagues, without our local league directors and these organizations we've partnered with, um, like the YMCA's and like, you know, the Sean Casey Foundations and, um, you know, Parks and Recs, we wouldn't be where we are today without all these local partners. And we just appreciate all y'all's help. And I'm constantly sending people um, you know, that are wanting references and wanting to learn more to groups like you guys because of what you're doing over and beyond your local community. Yeah, it's, I, I, I appreciate that. You, you know, it's great, too, and you connected us with uh, with Bill Schultz up in Dane County in Madison, oh, Wisconsin. he's great. Doesn't he have a great story? I love his story. I, I just love the guy. You know, every time I talk to him on yeah. the phone. Uh, we were actually he's able to. definitely one you're going to want to interview. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm I'm planning on bringing him in. Um, 
and he's you know, they actually have their big fundraiser event coming up this Saturday. We we were able to send uh, uh, an autographed uh, Jordan Monk uh, Jordan Montgomery Yankee baseball out to him. We shipped it out the other day. And, uh, and oh, good! Yeah, so they have m- some more auction items, and then and then Timmy Gephardt uh, shipped out an autographed Sean Casey ball from Pittsburgh, so that's going out oh, to them too. Great. So yeah, we're just trying to help them out, and it's just it's so cool. And I told Bill, I said, just keep me in the loop, man. As soon as that field is built, you know, as as soon as that thing's done, you're cutting the ribbon. I want to be there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we do have, and, and seriously, we appreciate you guys so much for reaching out and helping some of these other leagues because we do have that core group of, I call them my advisory, you know, committee, which is leagues like you guys that really stepped up and volunteered to help others. And, um, you know, we couldn't do it without that, that group of people. And, and we just know, you know, that you guys are doing it right and that you're always trying to improve and you're always trying to learn and um so we do have that dozen of leagues out there that we really um, recommend that people check out, and we appreciate you guys doing that for us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Stephanie, uh, this is Sal. How are you? Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. How, how would someone want to get, the, get into the league, how to start their own? Where could they go for the information and all that? <clears throat> sure. Um, so the first step would to be call, call our office or email our office. You can um, find us at MiracleLeague.com. Um, and the first step is going to be a starter package. So we're going to send out, we send out hundreds of starter packets a month. Um, and that's for anyone. That can be an individual. That could be an organization. It could be um, a company. It could be a, a nonprofit that's already established. It could be a mom or dad that just wants to help. Um, spearhead this in their community. Um, it could be a business leader in your community. They call us, they email us, uh, we send them an informational package. Um, we are a membership-based organization, so um, they choose if they think that they would like to move forward. Um, we give them some ammunition with some nice booklets and some brochures and things that they can go around to establish some awareness and some partnerships um, before they decide if they want to join. Um, and when they get to that point, it's never too early to join because we're constantly feeding them information and benefits. Um, so it's $500 to join to the America League. And at that point, um, once you do join, we provide, we provide them with a step-by-step manual. Um, we do in-person corporate orientations. We do um, conference call orientations to, to bring them and their board up to speed on everything from the organization through the design, construction, and the program. Um, So those are some of the benefits that we bring to the table once they join. And then at that point, we serve as a national networking chain for them to get them in touch with folks like Dan or Tim and um, to see what other leagues are doing and then also um, to, you know, connect them to anyone who contacts our office. So anybody that contacts our office from Dan's uh, territory we immediately connect them by email and introduce them, whether they're a donor, a player, or a volunteer. Um, so there's no greater joy than someone calling and saying, hey, do we have a, a Miracle League in you know, Orlando, Florida, and for me to be able to pull up the database and connect them, whether it be a player or a volunteer or a donor, because um, 100% of these donations stay in that local community. And when someone donates money, um, it's a really big deal for them to know that that money stays in that community. And we really pride on that. Um, So nothing, you know, we don't have administration fees or anything that comes back um, besides your membership fee, um, that $500 a year. And beyond that, 100% of all donations stay in that community so that they know if they give $10, that that $10 went to help a local child um, right there at that local field. So that's how we're structured um, corporately and kind of nationally or membership-based. So they just call, um, get them some information. They can um, see what things are in their territory or in their areas now. And, um, you know, the big thing that is happening now is that, um, you know, people will call and say, hey, you know, how close – can we build another mayor clique to each other? Um, and we've, we've had, you know, some people that have gotten a little bit territorial on, on their league, but what we say is um, we want a child to be playing in their own community. 
So we want them to be playing with their classmates and with their neighbors and with the kids they go to church with. Um, we don't want them to have to cross county lines or drive 60 miles to participate. Right. Um, you know, if that's the only thing that they can do, they're grateful and they're doing it. I mean, we have kids driving a 90-mile radius right now to play. But what better would it be for them to be able to play in their own community? Um, so what we do is we manage, we try to make sure two communities side by side are not building their capital campaign at the same time so there's not competition with donors and um, that kind of thing. But once a field is up and running and successful and the town next to them wants to do it, um, we're open to that because, again, you know, there's enough kids in every county um, that could make a league and participate and handle a miracle league. Um, so we kind of just base that on, you know, location and timing and what the, you know, the status of the other league that would be in close proximity to them. That's nice. Wow. I, 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 hope, I hope one opens up in my old neighborhood of Brooklyn. There's so many oh, great. baseball fields there. Well, That's why I wanted you to get the uh, word out. You know, a lot of major yeah. league baseball plays did come from Brooklyn, like uh, Johnny Franco, Pete Falcone, and uh, Absolutely. The, the Mets owner. And hopefully, yeah, we've, you know, had a, we've had a lot of interest from there. I think, you know, the biggest issue is land. And, yeah. um, I, unfortunately, we're in so many more smaller communities than we are these big cities just because there is, you know, either landlocked or there's so many other programs available for these kids where when you go out yeah. to the metro areas, um, the Brooklyn, suburbs, they don't have as much available. Well, down down in a town called Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, there's a field uh, down by the Belt Parkway overlooking the uh, Verrazano Bridge, which is a beautiful view. Uh, hopefully they could get something down there if they could talk to the uh, whoever the councils are over there in Brooklyn. Uh, I, I don't think they would say no, but uh, hopefully they say yes and yeah. they spread the word and get it out to uh, more areas. Absolutely, and, you know, uh, the MLB teams have been tremendous in the territories where we do have a, a, a pro team. Um, they are tremendous supporters of the Miracle League. And, uh, you know, I know we don't have anything right, right downtown New York, but that would be something we'd be very interested in and in trying to open that door um, with the teams there as well to try to get them involved. Awesome. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, this is Carl. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. So I was hearing earlier about how it was started, the Miracle League. Now you said it's you and two other people on your committee for the whole uh, leagues in the, the country. Is that correct? Yeah, that's us at the corporate office. Um, Diane, the founder, and then uh, myself, which I'm the program director. So I work directly with the, the individual leagues, such as Dan and um, the new communities that are coming on board. Now, um, now, my question is, with all the new communities coming in trying to join the league, into, uh, how do you guys get all this information done and send it out with just just, just use three? How's it, how's it, I'm amazed with how, prayer. how you can send all this out. <laughs> well, again, again, going back to our contacts, um, you know, when those people like the Dan or the Bill Schultz or the Sean Casey's call me, um, you know, we we provide them with ammunition, but they take it and run. And they're really the ones doing the groundwork. They're the ones raising the money. They're the ones getting the committees together. Um, we serve as a consultant to those groups. Um, and some are very hands-on with us, and they're contacting us on a daily basis. And some, you know, kind of take it and run, and we don't hear from them as much. Uh, but we'd love to hear from these leagues. We um, we love hearing their ideas. We love sharing their ideas with other groups. So our manual is up to, you know, um, four inches now. It's a four-inch binder. And it's just everything in that binder has come from local leagues of what's worked for them so that we can pass that along to another league. Um, so really it's come from the team of 300 Miracle Leagues out there um, sharing their experiences or their partnerships or their benefits. Um, bringing partners to the table that are interested in helping on a national level. Um, so, yeah, it is, it, you know, we stay very busy, but it is our local leagues that are the ones that make it happen. Stephanie, I got one question for you. Hi, my name is Andy from Miracle League. I help out Dan. Um, my question is, have you visited every Miracle League that is currently operating? 
<laughs> Good question. Um, so about five, up to about five years ago, uh, me or Diane had been to every grand opening um, in the country and and Canada as well. In Puerto Rico, we were both at Puerto Rico. That was that was one of my favorites. But um, about five years ago, we got to the point where we were having multiple openings on the same day. Um, you know, at the same time, and just budget-wise, we were having a really hard time getting to all the openings, which was really sad for me because it is the, my very favorite part of my job is going to brand new fields and opening days at new communities. Um, so what we started doing, it's probably been about seven years now, what we started doing is bringing in local directors to our office for a group corporate orientation. Um, because we were spending so much time and resources getting to an opening day, and although it was so great for us personally, we felt like we could give back more by having them come to us initially and getting that start, um, you know, having that orientation and meeting some of our partners and meeting other leagues right off the bat. Um, so we've spent more of our time and resources now on corporate orientations and instead of going into these communities. Um, so that's kind of what we've shifted to in the last five to seven years. Um, we still do, you know, a lot of traveling. Um, unfortunately, it's not a lot of opening days, but it would be more of going in and meeting with, like, the Yankees or, you know, having uh, some big meetings where we can come in and help that local community uh, with a foundation or, you know, different things that we can help benefit them prior to building the field with fundraising or awareness. Um, but we have seen a lot of them. Um, just not not every single one of them. I'm impressed. Wow. We got a. It looks like we just got another uh, couple of minutes here before we we got to wrap up. But um, before we let you go, Stephanie, okay. do, you, do you mind just throwing in a quick plug talking about Houston in November? Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, just got off a two-hour conference call yesterday um, with that committee, and it. I know going to the past two years, you don't think it can get better, but it's obviously, I mean, it is just growing, and we've got parents calling, and registration is here about to open, um, but we will have our annual all-star event in November this year in Houston. Um, we're going to have a partnership with the Astros there and with our local YMCA um, Miracle League partner there in Houston, and it is going to be... Um, I don't even know if you can say bigger and better, but, I mean, we are going to Texas, and it is Houston, so uh, we're really excited about this. I feel like we're going to have a draw of more kids just because it's easier to fly in and out of Houston, um, a little bit cheaper maybe for some of the communities to get there. Um, so we're super excited, and the one thing that, that we are about to announce, and I know Dan knows about it already, um, but this year we are adding a day. Instead of Friday through Sunday, we're adding Thursday prior, which is November 5th. And that is going to be a day for the directors and anybody in the country who wants to come in and learn more about uh, Miracle League, if they're interested in bringing a Miracle League to their community. We're going to do a whole day of inclusive play sessions. We're going to have speakers. Um, we're going to talk about Miracle League. We're going to talk about adaptive sports. We're going to talk about inclusive design um, with complexes. And it's going to be an excellent opportunity for YMCAs from all over the country to be a part of or Parks and Recs directors. Um, I know we've got minor league baseball interested in coming. Um, so, you know, huge opportunity for people to come and not just learn more about how to bring America League to your community, but adaptive sports in general, which uh, our Houston YMCA really leads the industry in that. So we're super excited to be a partner with that day and get some of these directors in there and do some trainings and networking with them as well before the big weekend kicks off on Friday, November 6th. All right, Stephanie. Stephanie, thanks thank so much. And, yeah, Meredith and the guys down there, they really do a terrific job with the adaptive sports. So I'm sorry, yeah, we're going to – they're, gonna, they're cutting us out here soon. So, But thanks so much okay, for calling in. No it was problem. great. It was great hearing from you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank right, you. Thank you. Thank you. See you we'll talk soon. We'll, bye, -bye. Uh, we'll all see you next week. Thank you for everybody in the back. Uh, Danielle and Stephanie for calling in, and uh, thank you for all the listeners, and have a great evening. Like to go to see a show, but Miss Kate said no. I'll tell you what you can do. Take me out to the bar.
ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. By their first name Told the umpire he was wrong all along Good and strong When the score was just two to two Katie Casey knew what to do Just to cheer up the boys she knew She made the gang sing this song Take me out to the ball 